Hey, welcome to Cashing in the Northwest, where sometimes the intro doesn't work the way you want it to. This is the podcast from the birthplace of geocaching right here in the great Pacific Northwest. Now, it's Thursday night, 9 p.m. Pacific. I'm Chris of the Northwest, and we're going to talk about geocaches and geocachers from here and all around the globe. Oh, that sounds like I just went through puberty. So while you're actively avoiding starlets on the slopes, we'll be caching in the Northwest. That's right. And tonight's topic, well, we're going to be talking about virtual rewards. It's going to be great. We've got a special guest, Frau Potter. Welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. And as always, live audience, you know what to do. Jump in that chat. I see it scrolling by my screen already. So we want to hear what you have to think and all, all, all of that. Just you make the show fun. But of course, before we get there, I'm Wits End and it's time to bring in our glowing gibbon. Some say he's the guy in the picture when you buy a picture frame. And others say he modeled yoga pants to pay for university. All we know is he's called Land Monkey. Hey, I thought we weren't going to bring up the whole yoga pants thing. All oh, right, fine. Oops, I, sorry. I forgot I knew, to tell stories I knew about that Chris one, now. I knew right. that one was made up because you never paid for university. But. Well, that's true. Okay. <laughs> I got by on yoga pants scholarships. <laughs> All right. You know what? Good to be here. Good to be here. It's Thursday night. Um, good to be here with Sand with you and Chris at the Northwest and Frau Potter. Cindy, nice to see you again. It's been a been a while. I think the last time I saw you was in Seattle at the big event. Yeah, that is likely. And I also was remembering the last time I was on this show was right before COVID. Oh, uh, the before times. All right. Yes. So Not that, that like... those two things are related in any way. <laughs> but... No, right. <laughs> Not no at pandemics all. after I come on the show, please. <laughs> we are delighted to have you back. Uh, always enjoy talking with you, Cindy. Yes. And uh, um, I think everybody's really peaked and curious about tonight's topic. So uh, I saw you got lots of notes in the show notes there. So I think we'll have a good chat about virtual rewards. All right. But before we get into that, folks, well, let me tell you, it's time for a quick reminder that we appreciate the support of our patrons who help to keep this podcast coming each and every week. Thanks to Land Sharks, one of our corporate Denali level sponsors. Check out all their products online at landsharkz.ca. And hey, you know what? If you're planning a trip to Vancouver Island this summer, well, make sure you make a point to swing by a Squimalt. Check out the store, find that cool high favorite point geocache outside and yeah. buy some buy some cool stuff while you're there and even just say hi to the to the staff. And if you're lucky, shortbread might even be there. Ooh. And you don't know who shortbread is. Well, I who is shortbread? I guess you're gonna have to find out. That's fine. Oh. I was gonna say, and if you're not planning a trip to Victoria Squimal this summer, there's still time to plan one. Indeed. So. Indeed. And who knows, maybe even this coming holiday season, there may be a live podcast again from there. Who knows? Things have been known to happen up there. You just yeah. know. He's crazy, man. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, you know what? Uh, what? Spending so much time talking about that corporate Denali level sponsor, I almost forgot to mention our other corporate Denali level sponsor. Well, that's Gold Country Geotourism. Visit exploregoldcountry.com. Learn more about the geotours and the region. Don't forget to download the app. And if you're planning trips to British Columbia, we'll go over to Vancouver Island. Well, why not plan a trip up to Gold Country and uh, enjoy the beautiful scenery and amazing mountains and lakes and rivers yeah. and valleys and everything. It's they got it all. Check you might it as out. well do both because they're like this far apart on a map. Uh, they're you know, like right beside each yeah, other. On how hard could it be? Yeah. All right. Well, that's exploregoldcountry.com. Or, you know, on Facebook, just look Explore Gold Country. Or on any social media platform, try Explore Gold Country. I bet you you're going to find them. All right. Good stuff. And, folks, if you want to know more about supporting this here podcast, anyone can do it. You don't have to be Land Sharks or Gold Country. Anybody can support the podcast. All you have to do is head on over and click that Patreon link on the CachingNW.com a website. Did you know Dora Moore was in Victoria today? <gasps> I didn't know. <laughs> Gotta love the free ferry for old people. Oh, Indeed. Nice. Yes. I wonder, but I wonder how much she paid to get on. Yeah. So she probably paid full <laughs> price, but yeah, I'm sure. 
one day soon. And CRS98 said, the last time I saw Cindy was a few weeks ago whilst paddling about finding oh. caches. Fun. Kayak caching. That was a super fun day. Awesome. Was there a, an event associated with that? or? Yes, there was. Oh. It was a, a, a geocaching event and then an optional uh, activity afterwards to go find a bunch of T5 caches. So it was really fun and totally inspiring because there were people that hadn't been on the water, they said in five years. Um, so I think it motivated people to get out and it made me think about those optional activities that you can do after a social event that it helps people to maybe feel more comfortable to do something fun like that. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Lots of fun. Fabulous. I think we now, counted folks, seven. There were seventeen boats on the water. Wow! Nice. Holy cow! So somebody without a boat could have just walked up to the cache, I think stepped so. from boat to boat <laughs> across the boat. Seems that way, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, not that many boats. Okay. Ah, oh, oh. says the first lackey tag that he found was a Frau Potter tag. Very cool. Yes, definitely. Uh, I was going through nice. that slight segue here. I won't stay too long in this because we want to get to our topic, but I was going through um, our trackables collection um, last weekend and starting to go, okay, now where do I have ones that I haven't activated yet? Get them into the collection. And it's so fun to go through and go, oh, yeah. And I remember when I met this person at this event and mm -hmm. this person. Really enjoy that, that exercise. A lot of fun. It's a nice aspect of the game, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's very nice that uh, that people will do that. All right. Um, if we you got some want hashtags, to join in, I do. I was going to start with the hashtags. If you want to join into tonight's chat, why don't you use the hashtag virtual to ask a question? Because we know you want to ask questions. In fact, there are already some in that chat. There are. Of course, you can use the hashtag FATAS if you want to bring up something in the after show. I already see some other hashtags like hashtag odd sounds coming from land monkey. <laughs> that wasn't for me. I just heard it in my headphones. I was looking around. I don't know where it came from. Hashtag podcast baking to tell us what you've got cooking tonight. And of course, hashtag podcast drinking to tell us what you're sipping on. That's a lot of hashtags. Awesome. I know. And, and they keep growing. I we should probably, <laughs> um, Thin them out one time. <laughs> Thin out the herd. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, speaking of lots of fun things, folks, it's uh, we got a little bit of news here before we jump into things. Um, first of all, uh, first challenge of the Wheel of Challenges was spun this week. So if you're not familiar with what that is, well, there is a uh, a wheel like you know wheel of fortune kind of wheel that spins wheel. around and has wheel stuff on it sorry wheel of fish the wheel, also wheel of fish yes. yes um we had one of those that uh at geo woodstock in the gps adventure maze canada oh, yes. we had a wheel there near geocaching fortune Did but anyhow have fish on it uh no i had wow. fun things to do whilst whilst geocaching uh maybe even had kayaking on there i can't remember but anyhow um there's one at hq and they gave it a spin and it landed on seeking smileys which i think is what we do all the time in the game but there's a nuance let me tell you what it is this challenge is all about seeing how many geocaches and adventure lab locations you can find in one month and in fact it's slightly less than a month but you know round it up uh from april 3rd this is coming up in just a few days to April 30th. I think they always start the souvenir challenges on a Monday. So that seems to make sense. Cindy's nodding. Yes, you are yes. correct. <laughs> Thank you. Um, from April 3rd to 30th, you have a chance to earn three new souvenirs. One for easy level, one for medium level, and uh, the third one for hard level um, of the challenge. Easy is find and log five caches. Um, or Adventure Labs, to earn the first souvenir. Medium is find a log 10, and then you get the second souvenir. And for the third souvenir, you're going to have to work on that one. 100 caches from April 3rd to April 30th. I think we can do it. I think we'll do it. 
I think we can, especially since Adventure Lab stops counts as a smiley. Oh, okay. I, Maybe, yeah, that might get in. I'm thinking they should add a ludicrous level, mm. you know, kind of like ludicrous speed. Yes. Very cool. All right. No, no coincidence that ludicrous and land monkey both start with L. No, not at all. Okay. Mm. Total randomness. All right. That's it for the well, news. Okay. That's very good news. I like these challenges. You know, I, I do have to admit it kind of changes my everyday geocaching. I plan out more like, well, maybe I'll wait until it starts. You know, let's just push it off a day or two to, to get in. Now we're what, three days away, four days away from that start. So maybe I won't go this weekend. Maybe I'll wait till next week to go get those smileys. <clears throat> just because, you know, that's the kind of guy I am. Um, we want to formally introduce our guest and welcome Cindy or Frau Potter back. Um, you said it's been since January 2020. I'm sorry, we should have had you on more often. You're one of our favorite guests. Now, <laughs> you say that to everybody, I think. No, we don't say it to Rock Chalk. <laughs> no. <laughs> there are certain people at HQ we like. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Uh, you happen to be one of them. Could you tell us a little bit um, about your background? How long have you been caching and anything else you want to throw in there? Sure. And first I'll say thank you for hosting and for all your uh, work to kind of build community through podcasting. That is um, something I think we don't often remember to thank people for when we when we go on these podcasts because it takes a lot of volunteer time to pull this kind of thing off so thank you um yeah so i am frau potter i uh started caching with my husband in 2004 uh but the truth is that i had a different account at that time and when I became a lackey in 2011, I created my Frau Potter account, actually 2010. But anyway, it wasn't until a few years into being a lackey that I discovered my old 2004 account <laughs> where I had logged two caches. And so literally I have like a seven year slump. But um, anyway, I started officially in 2004 and those are my two for, uh, finds that I had in 2004. Um, and I think that's what you asked me. <laughs> that it. is exactly what I asked you. <laughs> that's right. I was going to say whether somebody started caching in 2004, 2011, or 2023, we're just glad everybody's out playing the game. And everybody has a little bit different experience and different memories. So out of your caching experiences, do you have a, maybe a most memorable experience caching? Yeah, I find this question so hard, as I would imagine you all would, yes, if I you do. were actually asked, you know, had to respond, your most memorable, because my mind jumps around and it goes to lots of different things. I honestly, Cliff, did think about the paddle event um, from just recently, because sometimes it's about those surprising uh, days or moments that you don't really expect. Um so, so I can't choose one. So I'll just go with that paddle event. Um, riffing off of that because they, I don't know, there must have been 40 people there or so. And then uh, 17 boats, but many of the boats had two people in them. And the cash owner had literally put out, I think it was five new T5 caches in the uh, still a Guamish river. Oh no, not the still a Guamish. Oh my goodness. I'm getting my, um, snow. Uh, oh my goodness. I can't even think of the, I bet you Samam the Sammamish river, oh, okay. the Sammamish river. Anybody who's not from the Northwest would know that between, you know, squim and Snoqualmie <laughs> and <laughs> still a Guamish. <laughs> It's yeah. confusing at times, absolutely. Yeah, so he put out some new um, caches, but already had several that were out there. And so nice. um, I think that day we 
got 10 or 11 uh, different T5 caches and just a lot of camaraderie, some folks that hadn't been on the water in a long time. And, um, and there was a lot of cooperation too, because sometimes you need that when somebody's in an awkward boat, that's hard for them to reach the cache. Yeah. Was it, so, a, was it a, like a follow the current down river kind of pedal caching? Is that? No, I mean, it was very slow moving. So okay. no, no trouble. We're not talking white water or anything like that. <laughs> uh, almost more like a slough. Um, okay. Very quiet water. So no trouble to, um, to paddle. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Well, that sounds like a, a great highlight. And I, I'm sure you've had so many amazing geocaching experiences. It would be hard to, to just pick one. Um, you've joined us tonight, or we've asked you to join us tonight and you've been very gracious to accept, uh, because we were really curious about learning more regarding the virtual rewards. Um, now you are, uh, recognized as somewhat of an expert on this topic. When I, uh, when I reached out to, to HQ and said, we want to talk about virtual rewards as well, then you're going to need to talk to Frau Potter because there's really nobody else to talk to on this topic. So I'm curious why your name came up right away. What what is it that your role is at HQ where they would say, "Oh, uh, no, no, don't talk to me. Talk to Frau Potter." <laughs> well, I'll explain my role, but I'll first say that um, the reason I'm an expert on virtual rewards is not because of my role, but because it was my idea. Um, oh, okay. And ideas and follow through could. Anybody, not anybody, but many people in their role at HQ could project manage something. I happen to have done this in my role, but it's not necessarily because it's from my role. Ah. <laughs> but anyway, I'll go to my cool. role. So I am director of community, um, which means I oversee two teams at HQ for a total of 14 people. Um, and uh, those teams are doing direct support for the community. So email support, um, also social media um, posts, um, taking care of all the volunteers, um, being in charge of the guidelines, both for geocaching and for Adventure Lab, uh, greeting the visitors in the HQ Visitor Center, supporting mega and giga events, doing PR. Um, one, uh, our group at one point said that we are the mystery cache type of the HQ teams <laughs> because we do so many different things within um, within one team, but uh, virtuals, locationless caches, community celebration events, they were all kind of ideas that came from our team because we're in a position where we have a close relationship with the reviewers and we can kind of um, come up with ideas that maybe don't require engineering resources, but might end up being a win for the community. Um, so that's the, that's what my role is. It sounds, sounds like your team does everything except code. Is that <laughs> things <laughs> well, and, and yet there's the, legal and finance right. and human resources. We don't do those things. <laughs> that's awesome. You know, it's funny though, like uh, just sidebar for a moment that you mentioned that legal and human resources and, and finance. I think a lot of us tend to forget that there are lackeys who do things that aren't directly pertaining to the game mm -hmm. because it's, what have you got, close to 100 folks working there? Yeah, it's close at this point, yeah. So that, that's a big company, and yeah, yeah. you need all that stuff. <laughs> so, right, and I office management, and yeah. yeah. Yeah, but a lot of them are passionate about geocaching, so... Uh, it still it makes it fun for us all to be collaborating together. Very cool. I love that. Now, there we have we have new listeners. We have longtime listeners. We have new geocachers. We have geocachers who have been going since year two thousand. Um, to help level the playing field, can you explain to us what a virtual reward is? Um, how long has it been going on? You know, how, how do you get one? Those kind of things. Sure. So um, virtual rewards are a type of virtual cash. 
So uh, there are lots of different cache types in geocaching and the virtual caches are ones that were available for anybody to publish from kind of the beginning-ish time till 2005. And then we stopped publishing those and because we had quite a number of problems with them. And then we didn't publish any for 12 years. So the virtual caches are the ones where you don't need a physical placement. And, you know, I'm kind of preaching to the choir here, but yes, I'm trying to explain it for anybody that doesn't know this. Um, so you don't need a physical placement. It can be, you know, something like a, a plaque at the top of a mountain, or it could be uh, a statue in a, in a public square. So it doesn't have to have a plastic container or a log book. Um, so instead you, you have a logging task uh, associated with that. And so for 12 years, we had no new geocaches. I'm sorry, no new virtual caches. And um, yet at HQ, we would always hear people, you know, part of my job and my team's job is to listen to the community, to hear feedback, to respond to questions. And of course, we got a lot of questions about why can't you bring back virtuals? And we kind of stopped listening at some point and because we would always give the same answer because they caused too much trouble. They caused too much trouble. They caused too much trouble. The reviewers hated them. It ended up being just um, because their virtual placements have no proximity rules, their people would place too many of them and with not enough thought into making them meaningful experiences. And that got really frustrating for the volunteers so we didn't publish them anymore. Virtual rewards was a way to bring them back in a limited way. So that started in 2017 with our first launch of 4,000 virtuals. Then we did another launch in 2019 of 4,000 and another launch in 2022 of 4,000. So we've had three different launches um, so it's a legacy cache type, meaning that you can't just um, open up the website and create one of these at any moment in time. So they're not, it's not one of the drop down options, but these uh, limited, I, I think of them as limited release cache types, because then we figure if we only um, give out one per person, they're more likely to put more thought into it and less trouble for the reviewers. Wow, that's that's a lot of information. <laughs> and yeah, I remember the early virtuals and uh, I thought it was really cool when they decided to do some, some more rounds of rewards. You dropped a little hint and a little uh, thing in there that I didn't want to let go by. I said it was your idea and that's something I didn't know. That's awesome. Was there a specific spark idea or something that triggered that idea in your head? Oh, yeah. Uh, let me think. Uh, it's so funny that the time goes by, but I think yeah. I was talking to Brian and I think Jeremy had had an idea about bringing back webcams, actually. And so Brian brought that idea to me. And I said, well, that's really funny because I actually think a better idea is to bring back a limited set of virtuals. And Brian was like, oh, could you do that? <laughs> and we started brainstorming just how that could work. And I do want to do a shout out to mountain bike, John Stanley, mm -hmm. because he has been a really strong partner in this. So he was probably one of the first people I talked to about um, how we might be able to pull this off. Um, and uh, we have iterated a few different times now and tried to make improvements along the way. Um, but he has been somebody that uh, I've worked closely with on the releases. Nice. I think just uh, as an observation, because I was one of the people very lucky in this last round to have received one. Thank you. Yeah. Um, 
and uh it was so exciting to get the email of like oh, i have one to give and then it's that okay oh my goodness i've got my one shot <laughs> i've got to, i've got to do this the best i can do it and then and so then you know that you got almost a year to kind of work through it and everything and so you know we played around with a lot of different ideas and and then the other fun piece uh and that's for the whole geocaching community is like as that deadline gets closer and closer all of a sudden like within the last two to three weeks before the deadline all of a sudden boom 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 boom, boom there's virtuals everywhere <laughs> like yes we get to go find virtuals so yeah human behavior right everybody <laughs> waits till the last moment even though they were dying to get a virtual yeah uh, they wait until the last minute to publish them. Too funny, too funny. So given the hat experience, my own experience, but you know, also your reflections there, um, it does raise a question. I think I've even seen this question come up in the chat, but um, can you share with us how many virtual rewards were granted uh, last year? Um, and then maybe a follow-on question to that, of that, of all of those that that were granted, given out, um, the ability to place a virtual, how many people actually did place a virtual cache? Yeah, so this last round, there were 4,000 that we gave out and um, 3,566 have been published mm -hmm. in 86 countries. And I did the quick math on that, and that's 89% of those that were distributed. And you may remember, I think it was April of last year, or maybe it was the year before, if, if my mind isn't playing tricks on me, that we decided to allow adoptions. I think it was last year. Um, so I think that does improve the publish rate a bit because... There were some people, especially in the last few weeks or so, that just decided, ah, I can't pull it off for whatever reason, personal reasons. Maybe they just, things changed in their lives and they didn't want to put the effort in, but they had a friend um, or someone in their community that they knew really wanted to have a virtual. And so um, now we allow them to be adopted out, the unpublished virtuals or the um published ones the active ones very cool yeah and i'm impressed she did that 89 percent calculation in her head i know that <laughs> <laughs> math skills yeah. yeah yeah that's me <laughs> so obviously limited number so not everybody gets one there's got to be a secret sauce formula we know land monkeys on a very special list at hq we won't say what that list is or which lists he's on but how does HQ decide? I guess is the question that want everybody to know. Are there certain criteria that somebody has to meet uh, to qualify? Uh, or does somebody apply for it, or do you decide um, just you know, right. big, big hat full of names that you pull names out of a hat? <laughs> well, let's just say um, let's see. It was Jeremy has the let's make make better mistakes tomorrow. Um, we. John and I did learn from our first round when we we did have an algorithm that kind of tried to choose cash owners that that didn't go over very well with the community. So what we decided to do this, the second round and the third round is that we created an opt-in process. Part of it was that the first go around, it was a surprise to people. They, and many of the people um, may not have even been paying attention or realized that they got a virtual. And so they didn't end up publishing it. I, mm -hmm. off the top of my head, I want to say 63%. So two thirds of the people in the first round did publish their caches. But in the second round, it was like 91, 92%. And then this one, 89%. So these last two processes, we did that as an opt-in so you are effectively applying and what we try to do is make kind of a a reasonable low low enough bar so that we could include lots of different countries also because there are areas that don't have a lot of cashers and so if we had a high bar for favorite points for example it might be hard to get a virtual in china or you know taiwan or um, Japan or Mexico or something. So we, we wanted to try to make it uh, work all across the board because it can be, it would be crazy if we 
I think, tried to have a different criteria for every country. So basically, the criteria was you couldn't have had a previous virtual reward awarded to you. Um, you needed to own at least two active geocaches, and you needed to have hidden a cache in the last four years, and um, that you had of all your owned caches, including any previous caches, you needed a total of 20 favorite points. Um, and then there was an activity level. I think you needed to have posted a log on the website, a found it log or something within the last six months. So we're trying to look for people that are active mm -hmm. in the game um, and that they have put out some, some good hides. Um, but also we needed to be able to, to get lots of people from lots of countries applying. And so from that, then it was pretty much a random geographically spread um, uh, drawing. So that's another area where John is super, super helpful because it's there's a lot of under the hood kind of trying to figure out how do we make sure we are distributing these um geographically and people will always uh, feel like, well, you didn't do it right that time. You didn't do it right that time. And so you, you, you do as best as you can, but um, yeah, we didn't want, ba basically what we were trying to uh, correct was from the early, early, early round of virtuals, I think 81% of them were in the United States. Whoops. <laughs> so, Ooh, yeah. Um, <laughs> no wonder people were saying bring back virtuals, right? Like yeah. right. there's geocachers all over the world now. And so there were, I think in like Czechia, there were like four or something. And, uh, you know, it's just like, uh, yeah, how could you, it's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you said before, it doesn't matter what you do. Somebody's going to say it's not fair, but yeah. Um, yeah. I think the criteria that you you used you and john used is uh is fantastic i mean that's a honestly for an active geocacher that's a relatively low bar to have to cross right um and i, I like that you know you haven't won before and you have to apply so you, you're not going to randomly choose sock puppet accounts hopefully <laughs> you're gonna you're right it's gonna be most likely it's gonna be people who have some sort of interest in the game have been doing something for their geocache local geocaching community because they've earned the 20 favorite points. And yeah, I, 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 I really like what you and John have come up with there. I think that was about as fair as you can get. Yeah. Um, so more questions for you, Cindy. Um, and this is, this is the big question that I think everybody is listening to find out here uh, with the publishing deadline <laughs> having recently passed, are there any plans afoot to have a virtual rewards round four? We can't just celebrate what we already did. <laughs> yeah, back off, everybody. Just enjoy the day. <laughs> um, no current plans. Uh, I think that it is always good to give the volunteers a bit of a rest. Mm -hmm. uh, people, when you only have one, there are certain areas and certain reviewing areas where reviewer or the community likes to push the envelope and come up with the uh, most bizarre logging requirements. And that can get kind of uh, hard on the reviewers. So no, we don't have any current plans right now. And I think, you know, you do want to keep it special. Uh, so I do hear sometimes that there's that balance that that you that you want to see so that um it's that they're quality experiences um but at the same time i think it it would be nice to give you know more people an opportunity to have a virtual uh like you received jay but um yeah, it would be a conversation with the reviewers and I'm not going to have that conversation for a while. I'm going to give them a rest. <laughs> you know, it's interesting you mentioned that. I hadn't thought about that as a uh, a criteria for the decision making for HQ, but it makes a lot of sense. I mean, I know that you know exactly as you described, that is a lot of effort uh, 
extraordinary effort for the reviewing community volunteers <laughs> to have to to take on and a, as we discussed earlier we know it all happened in the last couple of <laughs> weeks right. of the <laughs> right up against the deadline so yeah I, that's yeah i appreciate you sharing that i think that's a good insight that we might not have thought about as to the reasoning now you mentioned the quality of hides and or, or reference something along those lines are there certain restrictions guidelines about if somebody if somebody is granted a virtual cache do you have any kind of guidelines restrictions of where they can publish it uh what kind of subject matter it might pertain to something anything or just yeah. all you know anything goes um well it's they're fairly simple guidelines but um i think the key difference with G regular physical placements is that they don't have the proximity guidelines so it makes it a lot easier to find um a unique location and not have to worry about is there another cache within um 0.1 miles yeah. um but of course it still has to have it has to comply with the agenda guideline no agenda guideline and no commercial content guideline so um so those are subject matters i guess that that you would have to avoid and then location wise there's a little more flexibility since you don't generally as mu have as much maintenance. You know, you you should be checking on your cache and knowing whether anything's changed about it. But the general rule there is that you need to have visited the location within the last couple months. Um, so it allows people to do a little bit more interesting locations. Like I just noticed today, we have a new one in Antarctica as part of this this latest round. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> geocachers go to some adventures, some locations like Indeed. Antarctica. Yeah. But then I looked, I think there's six there. Uh, so you could really get a lot of, uh, but that's from all, all uh, times of virtuals. Sure. But so that begs the question, if, if the distance restriction doesn't apply, there must be a, I assume a limit on how many you can't just pile 25 virtuals on the same place, right? Or can you? Well, I mean, in theory you could, but I, the reviewers I'm sure would um, yeah. explain why that isn't a good idea. <laughs> uh, so, so here's an example of where I know it has happened. I think it's the four corners and I'm, I'm not going to remember it's Colorado, uh -huh. New Mexico. I'm going to have very, very show my bad um, ge geographic knowledge, but four corners area, um, there's four virtuals uh, uh, and they're, you know, super close to each other, right? But there's a circumstance where I think it's still really fun because yeah. I think it's probably four different owners and they effectively represent four different locations because you're getting four different states uh -huh. as part of it. Uh, so it's a clever use of close proximity. But I think everybody who's getting a virtual is probably savvy enough to, yeah. to not want to be right next to someone else's virtual. So yes, in theory, it doesn't break the guidelines, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure reviewers would say, you realize this isn't going to be a good experience yeah. for people. Sure. You know, why don't you try to find something else? But if we didn't have these as limited releases, if we had it so people could just, you know, go to the drop down and do a virtual, I mean, I think they would just do virtual power trails. Like, right. What stops you from just sitting all day? And just... Yeah. It's like other, other apps I've seen with piles and piles and piles of QR codes on top of each other. That, mm. What could it be? Mm -hmm. that? <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> GSM times two says, I withdraw my comment about giving everybody one. Some group would create geo art 200. Yes. There you go. Somebody Just went. finding our way helped uh, with the uh, geography question, said it's Arizona, Utah, Colorado, and New Mexico. Mexico. There you go. Yay. There's a geo so out there you. that knows their geography. <laughs> thank, you. thank you for saving You basically saving had me. it. <laughs> Yeah, and Quads I, loves the Four Corners virtuals. By the way. Yeah, when I heard about it, I thought, oh, please tell me we we would allow that because yeah, 
Yeah, I would like to go also. That's one of those places I'd love to visit someday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That makes perfect sense to do that because, you know, I I looked into going there on my last vacation. I was like, it's a bit of a drive. Maybe I can do it. I can hit four corners. I can get those four states. But um, I want to say it was New Mexico that right there at the corner, there's a lot of um, reservation land that it's there are no caches placed on there. So having a virtual really makes a lot of sense. Yeah. 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 Um, and oh, I had a thought. No. Oh, I know no, what my that, thought was. That's my thing. That's my thing to forget what I was going to mention. <laughs> oh, no, you, have, you take another thing. <laughs> okay. I did remember it briefly there. So one thought I still will pass along. And I probably said this after the last round of virtuals is that I still, Still, I'm surprised that we don't have more people doing them in more wilderness areas. Mm -hmm. So um, back to your question of where did I originally get the idea? I forgot that I got it on a hike in North Carolina where I ran into some geocachers. It was not a long hike. It was, I want to say, Smoky Mountains area-ish. And the hike was maybe three miles or something. And at the end, there was a virtual And I just thought, ah, this is perfect because it's motivating. You know, I might not have otherwise Mm -hmm. taken the time to do that hike, but I ran into some other cachers where it was actually a very vigorous um, activity for them. And they were super excited to get that virtual. And I thought, you know, that that would be nice if we could have more virtuals that required um, more physical exertion and i think i was also thinking because some locations are not good for physical placements and so i was hoping we would get more like that but i think a lot of people want to do a statue you know because it's like uh going to be visited by more tourists and stuff sure i i don't think you're going to get a lot of drive-bys in antarctica (laughs) no that's true (laughs) that's pretty that's pretty adventuresome that going to have to look at my uh, vacation schedule here in the next couple of years. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just going to say Land Sharks has a trip you could book yeah. to Antarctica oh, next really? year. Yep. So, oh. hmm. travel.landsharks.ca. Check it out. Uh, that fit in really well. <laughs> oh, you put yours on a mountain. Awesome. Yeah, actually, Freddie Yay. said I, I put mine on a mountain. Nice. So nice. Way to score points. <laughs> exactly. Now, Cindy, a few minutes ago, you said something, and it got a lot of people excited right it here. Did. I saw this, the chat go wild. On this <laughs> podcast. Of, you talked about, well, webcam caches. That got people excited. Is there any chance of a limited release of new webcam caches? Well, I know we're putting you on the spot here. <laughs> Well, um, we don't currently have any plans for that. I have put a little bit of thought into it. Um, We had previously uh, felt like there were a bunch of privacy issues. Um, Mm. So those would have to be resolved. So, for example, um, how do we know that someone just didn't put a camera up that they're going to be, you know, taping people all day and then what are they going to do with that footage like how do we know a cacher didn't put up a private camera instead of it being like a wilderness webcam or something associated with a government agency or not not the governments are trustworthy or anything um that's a whole other podcast (laughs) (laughs) Um, that's interesting though i I hadn't thought about the the legal issues around Mm -hmm. i hadn't thought of that aspect either we at HQ, we have spent a lot of time on privacy and legal issues. Uh, Europe has a lot of privacy laws that we had to comply with. Uh, California has had a lot of privacy laws. And so our brains sometimes think about, like, let's not get ourselves down a a, a path that we can't recover from. Um, yeah. yeah. My battery's running low. Uh-oh. <laughs> You know, plugged well, in. With that word. <laughs> I thought Uh-oh. it was plugged in. Okay, whatever. Our Potter will be right back after he finds <laughs> the electrical outlet. 
Well, while you're looking for that, <laughs> uh, let's say Doramore logged a virtual today that was placed 20 years ago. Oh, wow. And we're, we'll have to look to our reviewers. Does anyone check to make sure that the COs are still active for all that time? So, I'm not, not sure if people heard the question there, Chris, but um, uh, the question being that uh, uh, how do does, we know if a CO is still active after all that time and a, still a monitoring virtual. the logging requirements? Yeah. So maybe if any of our reviewers in the in the in the chat have some thoughts around that. It'd be interesting. I, I, I see Cindy's still working there, getting the yeah. power reconnected. I had never considered the um, the legal ramifications. For sure. Yeah. Well, I don't know what's yeah. going on with her webcam there. Yeah. Now you got <laughs> webcam kaleidoscope there. <laughs> We can hear you, Cindy. I, I, I kicked yeah. the uh, the cord at some point. Hold on, let me turn this off okay. again. <laughs> so, I'm gonna, um, gonna have to put a disclaimer on for uh, seizures for the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Do you want me to try to answer that? Uh, please. Oh, question? yes, please. Sure, you, yeah. Okay. Even though I, I <laughs> I'm just gonna be incognito. So, um. <laughs> Yeah, that's we a great don't know question. Who's and I use answering this question. It could be anybody. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Um, I think that it's a good question and something that we should be thinking about for um, Earth caches as well. Um, as time goes on, you know, that it might not be good for the community if we have. Uh, caches out there where we know nobody's paying any attention to the logging requirements. Um, but at HQ for a long time, we have had a policy that's like no search and destroy. So we don't try to, you know, we could easily do a huge swath of like looking at all the virtuals who, which owners are no longer active, but I kind of have a hunch the community would, um, get upset with us if we started, yeah. you. Um, you know, archiving their favorite virtual. So we try not to get the community upset at us. I call that an archive party, but yeah. Let's see, where you're going. <laughs> see where you're going. Hey, Start Cacher brought up a really good suggestion here. Um, C Cindy, um, Chris, yeah, pull that one up. Cindy, what do you think of this idea? He said, maybe geocaching.com could grant each U.S. national park and other cache restricted areas. And hey, why limit it to the US? But anyways, uh, a couple of virtuals that they could publish, maybe with the help of the local geocaching associations. I like that idea. That's a cool idea. Yeah, that's a good idea, yeah. It's a great yeah. idea, Star Cacher. Thank you. Nicely done. Maybe you could give the virtual caches to the geocaching associations, knowing that they have to go out to the parks and help with that. It might be the easier way to go around it that way. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just thinking out loud, and I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the verbal processing. Yes. Chris, did you have, uh, um, <clears throat> have something else you wanted to? Well, I'm looking to see. Um... What are you looking no, at? No, I'm, I'm just looking at, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm actually trying to read. Some of the uh, responses here. While, There's been a lot of the responses. Yeah. Well, while, while, you know, trying to make sense of something to say. Geocaching Freddy says, I was surprised and thankful to receive my virtual reward. It just took a long time for me to find, really decide where to place it. Yeah. And yeah. apparently it was out in the wilderness. So good job. That's yeah, great. exactly. Nicely done. It's, oh, no. Oh, we, we lost, lost Cindy. Water completely. Ah. Okay, well, you know what? Why don't we jump to uh, some more stuff from the, the chat and we'll see if Cindy uh, reconnects while we do that. What else have we got? Um, um, UDAC asks, how many virtuals exist and is it more or less than Adventure Labs? Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, I, bet, I bet there are more Adventure Lab locations considering it's five to oh, ten stops. Steps, sure. But, yeah, and virtuals, um, but that would be something that our research department is going to have to dig into. Otherwise, I start talking like Captain Kirk 
as I try to <laughs> look all well, this up while and, I'm talking. And I don't want to steal Cindy's thunder either because she had uh, she had some stats for us, and I think yeah. she was going to talk about total numbers. So maybe maybe we'll see if Cindy reconnects. Um, we'll we'll get her to answer that question, and if she doesn't reconnect, we'll we'll go through and see what we can answer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> um, so Wet Coast heard asked if there will be another round uh, being handed out. We did ask and and answer yeah. that one. Um, uh, Start Casher had another one here, wondering if someone was granted a virtual but adopted it out, are they still eligible for the next round? That is Ooh, a great question for Cindy. That's a great question. Um, we can't my answer. thought would be no, <laughs> because right? because they you they were won one. you won one right. previously, That's right. yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But you know, we'll see. Good question. And if you couldn't, if you couldn't um, publish that for one reason or another, then yeah. maybe not. Maybe not for you. Um, I'm just quickly checking my my email and everything to see if I had any messages from Cindy, but <laughs> I don't see anything. <laughs> Oh dear. Well, we're coming up on an hour anyway. Okay. This has been a great discussion. Um, so, Cindy, if you're listening, thank you. We yes. certainly appreciate you coming on. So glad you Before before we wrap it up, um, Cindy did have in the show notes a okay. few stats here that I think maybe we should share with people because it is re- related to some of the questions that have come up. So, um, we were going to ask Cindy if there's any cool stats she'd like to share about the virtual rewards, and she did have a few in her back pocket here and we're, we're just going to say them for her because she can't. Oh, oh, what's up? Oh, she's coming back. Look at that. Just in time. You did it. Welcome back. <laughs> I was just trying to avoid having guys. to answer any more questions. <laughs> <laughs> Sneaky. Uh, well, we had, we had one more and we were just loading it up for you here. So it's perfect timing. Okay. Um, we you had some uh, some cool stats prepared that you were going to share with our listeners around uh, around virtual rewards and virtual caches. Yeah, sure. I just had a few, and uh, yeah, I don't know what happened to my computer, but I'm sure other people have had this experience. You oh, know, yeah. in these remote environments where oh, yeah. we're we're trying to figure out our mics. Are I don't know. My computer totally. Oh fell apart. Um, oh I, one of the things I looked at recently that I thought was really cool. Oh, oh. 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 yeah. <laughs> We're having a little bandwidth issues For, now. It's well, so cool. Cool. So cool. <laughs> Cindy, oh, you're, you're kind of frozen there. Can you still hear? You're very broken up. We can't hear you in a coherent sentence. Yeah. That's okay, Cindy. You know. Okay. Oh, now, she, now well, you're back. Yeah, but we'll uh, get a phrase with yeah, you. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're having some real bandwidth issues there. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what. Um, Cindy, I can read out the stats for you if you'd like. You can just nod in agreement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. So. Uh, what Cindy had shared with us, and we will share on her behalf because we don't trust her computer anymore, <laughs> uh, is that there are virtuals in 163 countries and territories around the world. That is a lot of places yes. to go visit and find virtuals. Um, Jim, do you want to take the next one? Uh, virtual Rewards 3.0 have an average of 24% favorite points. So nice. That also seems quite, quite the accomplishment there. Very cool. And Chris, did you want to take the last one there? There are now more virtual reward caches than old virtuals. One third are old, two thirds are new, about 14,000 total active virtuals, and only 4,335 old virtuals. So that means 9,791 new ones. Chris, are you going to take credit for the math or give it to Cindy who really did all the math there? Well, I take the credit for reading. <laughs> I didn't do any of the math. <laughs> that's that's amazing. I'm actually, so first of all, 14,000 active virtuals around the world. That's super cool. But yeah. the fact that there is now more virtual reward caches than grandfathered virtuals is fascinating to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't realize that many had 
had been given out, but, uh, that is but cool. I guess when you, you know, from the stats you shared earlier about percentages de uh, deployed and such, I guess that makes sense. And it's a great way of repopulating, um, that type of cash in a controlled manner and really making sure not only is there some quantity, but there's quality yeah. along with the quantity. Right. And there are a lot more geocachers now than there were when they were first, you know, frozen or stopped. So. <laughs> Grandfather. Yeah, there you go. There's the word. Word's hard. It's late. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too funny. Um, maybe one last thing. I just see there's a, a comment. Um, maybe this is a good one to end on here uh, for a little feedback for Cindy, maybe. Um, from Seebeck Tribe, um, who said, I loved being awarded a virtual, um, okay. and I put it in my small community on the Kitsap Peninsula. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Very cool. There you go. <laughs> a great way to draw geocachers who are traveling around into smaller communities. So, yeah, exactly. So, good job. It's fantastic. Because if there's a virtual, I'm going to go out of my way to go find it. So, that certainly, and and I think the twenty four percent favorite point shows that the, the new virtuals have been put in good locations. Yeah. So, Cindy, Cindy thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> yeah, I was if, gonna say I think she stabilized the connection. I, I think she has. Okay. Wanted to make I a final. I can stabilize enough to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> if our oh, listeners wow. wanted to connect with you, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Um. Uh, Mm, through through our help center, we have, um, you know, so you can write questions to us and you can always write attention to Cindy Potter. Um, you could also write me through my Frau Potter uh, profile and message center. Um, so it depends on whether it's a question about the game or uh, something about my, I, I tend to have from the message center is more my player. Yeah. Um, role instead of my mm -hmm. you know job <laughs> nice right. and you and you know she's going to get back with you because you could see her tenacity just to get back on the podcast <laughs> yeah That's right. so we appreciate that <laughs> thank you so much all and right yet she persevered you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you listeners we hope you enjoyed this episode of caching in the northwest absolutely i want to take a moment to thank land sharks and Gold Country Geotourism are two corporate Denali level sponsors. Land Sharks with the Z.ca is the outdoor adventure and geocaching store. Check them out online. They are shipping those orders daily. And for absolutely amazing geocaching adventures, check out exploregoldcountry.com. Folks, we want to thank all of our faithful Denali level supporters. That is Land Sharks, Gold Country Geotourism, Team Squirrel, Groovy Owl, and Cashly, the geocaching app. If you want to know more about supporting this here show, well, head on over and check that and, and click on that Patreon link on the cachingnw.com website. Just like Skyhawker did. Uh, and JCAR. And CRS98. And Ari 54321. MC Three Cats, Al Robrick, B Pen Dragon, Gia Cassius, Boomer 365, Donners, Acrodoc, Subway Mark, Limax, Antaeus, Geo Nav Pro, M Nerve, Kev MacD, Team Noltex, Gas Station Tuna, Trexer, Cores Got, U Talks to Rocks. GSM times two. Whidbey Island Gal. Logwork. Seabeck Tribe. Fairwood West. Peach of Washington. Udak. Genies. Just finding our way. Sprouter. Wino Seattle. Tick Magnet. Green Words. Camp Clan. Flagman. Kettle Barb. Wet Coaster. Rar 285. LG 9000. Keats, 94. Wow, didn't even hardly hear that. Kid Vegas, 19. Uh, say gay hove. Dora Moore. A new patron, Just Carlo. And another new patron, BC Rock Crawler. All righty. Gosh, I'm sorry that Frau Potter had to 
jump off so quickly, but we're so sure glad that she joined us. And thank you, Frog Potter, if you can still hear us. Wherever you are. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we hope you uh, enjoyed the show, and we thank you for taking the time to listen to this episode of Cashing in the Northwest. Your support helps keep the quality shows coming. If you like the show, click the Patreon link on the CashingNW.com website. Now, if you didn't like the show, let us know what you want us to talk about. In either case, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and more. Subscribe and give us a review. Now, if you were in a restaurant, you would tip. If you were in a live audience, you would clap. But since you're on a podcast, Leave us a free, fast, fabulous, fantastic five-star review. You can also call in to 253-693-TFTC and ask a question or meet us at a virtual cash any time of the day or night. And of course, you can email us at feedback at cashingnw.com. Join us every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Pacific for a live show and livelier chat. The show is produced by Chris Humphenauer, Jay Paulwitz, Jim Paulwitz, Jay Kennedy, and Brian Lang. I don't know. You guys may have just, you know switched uh, it's like a freaky friday on a thursday hmm. uh, this show's yeah. licensed under a creative commons attribution 3.0 license copyright 2023 by chris umfenauer folks i ask you to stay tuned for where is it there it is <laughs> the, the after, after show, show. <laughs> the after show. there we go echo in here <laughs> <sighs> oh, oh I think well, there's a ton of after show content though. there there's some um i, I see crs 98 says uh if he's able to join next in the next few weeks it'll be from france wow. Very cool. well wow. listening to a podcast doesn't incur any international charges no no well, not if you download it yeah that's true very cool um that's that's funny uh that was just when cindy disappears like oh no because i think she forgot that there's more to the podcast either that or, or she got disconnected again I, I don't know that's okay uh, she she was a trooper to to stay she free. was to come yeah. back after yeah oh Very her much. battery dying <laughs> oh perfect storm right um yep. I, I see there's a a request for a boat story from you jim um, oh i yeah I, I reminded it's very short but if we have any other stuff you can get to the no our, star casher says it's already friday for him oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, just a little short little thing that triggered early on in the podcast that you were talking about 17 boats out there on a kayaking mm. thing through the slough or whatever. And Chris, I think you made the comment, boy, you could just walk across, you know, then after, and I think I did see GSM times too, the boating safety officer saying, you know, pro tip, do not stand up in a kayak. <laughs> but it's just, it just triggered a completely unrelated yet uh, walking from boat to boat story. My father served in the army and served in, in World War II. Didn't really, I, I, my understand, he didn't talk a lot about his army experience. I don't know a lot of what he did. And I think <clears throat> that's fairly common with a lot of people that went through the war. But he uh, he didn't, my understanding, he didn't uh, actively fight in the, in, in the engagement over there, but he, he did serve in Europe as part of the occupying forces. And the one thing he remember that I remember him telling me, he says, he says, we sailed across the Atlantic. And he said, when we went over there, I think you could have walked to Europe by stepping from boat to boat to boat. That's what triggered the memory. And he said, and he said, and it, it always, it always meant something. Or, you know, he says it, it was so significant to him that when he came home from Europe, there wasn't another boat in sight. Hmm. And read into that what you will. Yeah. Now. So I mean that was one of the, one of the few stories that he shared with me, and I thought, oh, boat walking from boat to boat story. Yeah, that. So. Wow. Impactful. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, I was just going to share a quick fatas from for myself. Uh, tomorrow morning, a uh, new video goes live. It's been a little while since I've had one out. Um, this one is about our experiences tackling the WSGA Geo Tours. So um, if folks are looking for a little insight, um, go back and listen to our previous uh, prior episode with MC3Cats yeah. where we asked lots of questions. Um, but uh, the first of uh, what will be a few videos of our uh, WSGA Geo Tour experiences, the first one where we really talk about 
the feels of the experience as well as you know showing some of the great scenery etc um check it out uh on youtube tomorrow morning is your inside out of sight out of sight dynamite well with that and on that bombshell <laughs> folks join us next week and until then get out and get caching in the northwest <laughs>